My name's Kevin Perry. I'm a stop motion animator with over 10 years of professional experience. I've animated on movies like Kubo and the Two Strings, and now I create stop motion for social media. I've teamed up with Motion Design School to teach you how to be a stop motion animator. After this free lesson, find out how you can enter to win my entire stop motion course. Do you wanna be a stop motion animator, but you don't know where to start? Well, I'm gonna show you how you can start animating stop motion right now with materials and equipment that you probably have laying around in your house. Stop motion animation is a series of pictures that when played together in sequence, create the illusion of movement. So I would take a picture, move an object, take a picture, move the object again, take a picture and so on. And when I play those pictures back really fast, it looks like the object is alive and moving on its own. Here's what you need to get started. A constant light source like a lamp. Because we're taking pictures over time, you don't want to use sunlight coming in through the window. That sunlight's going to change and cause flicker in your animation. So grab a lamp to light your scene. A tabletop and an object to animate. And you can animate any object. If this is your first time animating, grab an object that's very simple and doesn't have moving parts. I'm going to animate a piece of paper crumpled up into a ball. And a camera to capture the pictures. The most common camera we have is a phone. So that's what I'll be using for this lesson. Now it's time to set up our scene. The first thing you need to decide is where you want to animate your object. So I'm gonna have my paper ball right here. Next, you wanna set up your camera pointing at the object. Now I have this tiny tripod and clamp to hold my phone in place. It's super important that your camera stays in the exact same spot. You don't wanna lift, take a picture, lift, take a picture. Your camera is going to be moving all over the place. And then finally, you wanna place your light source in a position that's going to nicely light your object. So you might wanna grab a few lamps to create some fun lighting. Before we start animating, we need to decide on the performance of the object or what the object is going to do. Now, the fun thing about animation is that an object can become anything in the world through movement. Think about describing how an animal moves using your hand. So I can create a rabbit. I can create a frog. <laughs> I can create a snake. And I can create a butterfly. It's all the same hand, but the movement creates the character. This is the most important lesson in animation. I've decided that my paper ball is going to move like a sports car. It's going to rev its engine, it's going to peel out and then it's going to zip around the scene. So pick a movement that's completely unrelated to your object and then decide what the performance will be. Luckily, there are apps that make it easy to take pictures and watch your animation. Now I have an iPhone, so I'm gonna use an app called Stop Motion Studio. It's free, but I've paid a few dollars to get the pro version. Whatever phone or app you decide to use, Launch it and we're gonna look at a few settings before we start animating. First, you wanna find the setting that controls frames per second. We're gonna set it to 12 frames per second. That means that there are 12 pictures that will create one second of animation. Next, you wanna make sure that all the camera settings are set to manual. This includes shutter speed and focus. If you leave them on automatic, they're going to set on their own each picture and then that's gonna create flicker in your animation. So you wanna make sure you're in control of these settings. And once you've looked at those settings, we can start animating. I've posed up my first frame, so I'm ready to animate. And I'm going to capture it by lightly touching the camera button on the phone. Now here you wanna be very careful not to move your phone around when you're touching the screen. The basic rhythm of animating is move the object, walk over, capture the frame. Move the object, walk over, capture the frame. And stop motion apps have built-in playback. So when you pose, 
you can walk over and first play back your animation to see if the current frame feels right. And if it does, you capture it. Now it's important to understand frame rate when you're animating. I want my paper ball to sit still and wait one second before it starts revving its engine. So if I want it to wait one second, I'm animating at 12 frames per second, so I need to capture 12 frames before I start moving the paper ball. So whenever you want to animate an action, think about how long that action should take. If it needs to take half a second to jump from here to here, well, that'll be six frames at 12 frames per second. If you want it to very slowly make its way across the table and take 10 seconds, at 12 frames per second, that would be 120 pictures. And that's the best way to get what's in your head into the animated performance. And now that we're all set up and ready to go, let's animate. I've just finished the animation. Let's take a look at it. When we step through my animation, you can see that smaller spaces with more frames create slower movement, while larger spaces with less frames creates faster movement. This is known as timing and spacing. Yeah, that's a pretty convincing car for a paper ball. Um, there's two things I focus on when I'm animating stop motion. One is clarity. Is my performance clear? I take things one action at a time. So I wait, I rev the engine, I wait, I peel out the car, wait, and then zip around the scene. These actions aren't happening all at once. So take your time and tell a clear story. The second thing I'm thinking about is the rhythm of the performance. So I have slow bits and fast bits, and I'm weaving between the two. So I have a slow rev, and then a fast peel out, and then a slow corner, and then a fast zip around the scene. It's that rhythm between fast and slow parts that's going to give you a more interesting, more dynamic animated performance. When starting in stop motion, most people have a tendency to rush through performances. So their object has that <laughs> chaotic, energetic feel to it. But focusing on clarity and rhythm, that will slow you down and give you a more clear, more dynamic performance. And with that, we've created stop motion animation. You can become a stop motion animator right now with the materials and the equipment you have in your house. If you're interested in getting serious about stop motion animation, I have a 12 part course with Motion Design School that covers in-depth topics like timing and spacing, rigging, claymation, acting, and a lot more. There's a link in the description to see what's included in the entire course. Now that you can start animating right now, I want to see your animation and give you the chance to win my entire stop motion course for free. The challenge is to animate a paper ball, moving or acting like something else, just like I did in this lesson. Post your animation to Instagram before October 15th and use the hashtag MDS underscore paper ball to enter. I'll be choosing five animators to receive my stop motion course. Have fun animating.